Hey there folks, Luke here with the Outdoor Grip Review. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for tuning in for this transmission as we take a first look at the Snug Pack Scorpion 3 tent. This is a burly tent. There's no doubt about it. But gosh, it is impressive. I've set this up a number of times already and I'm very, very impressed with this tent. And judging by all of the great reviews on the internet, <laughs> I'm not the only one that's impressed by it. So to start off, we're just going to go ahead and set it up, plain and simple. So right here is the fly, and this is the inner for the tent. Now, you have three poles here. You have two poles with green tips, and this tent is color-coded so you know where to stick each pole. You have one pole here that is gray, and as you can see, we have tons of stakes ready to rock and roll. Now, to set up this tent, you actually start with the fly. This is a fly first tent. So you could set this up without your tent, the inner, getting wet. Very, very cool feature. Here's a tip for you as I'm getting ready to set everything up. Do not allow your pull ends to snap together. It's always best that you do it by hand. Yes, it takes more time, but by letting them just snap together, there is a risk of breakage. So take your time, treat your poles with some care. Now, as I go about setting up this tent, I will be supplying you all with some information in regards to the materials and stats. This is a true four season tent. You can use this in the rain, you can use this in the heavy snow, it is built to take the abuse. It can handle the strong winds. This tent is available in one color, and that's what you see here. This is olive drab. All right, guys, well, step one is complete. We have the fly all set up, all the poles in. Gosh, that is a large amount of space. That is very, very cool. So right here, this is your vestibule. This is your door. It's all rolled up. And one thing that I really, really like, this is a cool feature. And it's so simple, but yet many companies don't do this. You can see how I have this rolled up, okay? And it's secured right here with these straps. Well, these pieces right here are shock cord. So you can actually stretch it and get it to fit. Most companies just have a piece of cordage. It's not shock cord, so it could be a struggle. That's very smart. Very, very smart. So taking a look on the inside here. As you can see, you have all of these clips, right? Those will come into play later on. As you can see there, you have the poles, the pole sleeves. You have a vent right here, which is also Velcroed. Now it's time to put the inner inside of the tent. Of course, you wanna line up the door to the inner and with the door of the tent itself. Now that we have the inner inside of the tent, remember all of these rings? Well, there are corresponding, let's see here. There are toggles, just like you saw for the door here, which attach all over this tent to those rings. Each toggle has a corresponding ring. So essentially, now we're gonna put everything together. We're going to, going to attach the inner to the fly. You could do this any way that you want to. I like to do one side, and then I like to hop on the other side, and then do it. Now, when it comes to weight, I'll go ahead and give you the trail weight first. And that includes just the fly, the poles, and the inner. You are looking at six and a half pounds. Now, if you're gonna carry the entire package, and that's what we refer to as pack weight, you're looking at seven and a half pounds. And that includes the fly, the poles, the inner, the stakes, the guy lines, and the stuff sacks. Now this will take some time because there are toggles hidden all over the place. There's rings all over the place. So you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. So it will take some time. If you want to carry just the fly and the poles, you're looking at five pounds. All of the seams are taped and sealed. We have the inner in, it's ready to go. Now we need to basically lock down the bottom. At each corner, you have a buckle, which will connect essentially where the poles are at the ends. So attach the buckles all the way around and then put the right amount of tension on each one. So folks, here is the Scorpion 3 tent. Check that bad boy out. 
This is the door. You have two zips all the way down. You can roll that up. You have a very nice size vestibule that you could fit a lot of gear in there. This right here is a vent. As you can see, you can stick this thing out all over the place. Another vent right here, guy lines. So she's all done. Let's go inside, shall we? One thing that I should mention before we go in is that the zippers are covered. And with this cover, you do have Velcro along the way to keep it down. Now with these two sections right here, you can leave them or you can roll them up and store them on the side. It really is up to you. I will go ahead and just lay them to the side. So here we go. Check that out, guys. <laughs> this is a very, very nice tent. So you can see you have the vent here. You also have the vent on each side. You also have mesh pockets that line the entire tent. You can see also that this is a bathtub floor all the way around. So you don't have to worry about getting wet. Now this is designed to be a three person tent. My hawk friend's back out again. <laughs> anyway, it is designed to be a three person tent. And yes, it really is a palace for two, but like most three person tents, if you're three good sized individuals, you're going to be close. For myself, I come from a short family, so three of us can fit in here comfortably. But yes, you're gonna be a little close, there's no doubt about it. Luckily, with the vestibule, you can fit all three packs, no doubt about it. For me, my recommendation is that this is more of a two person tent. For Susan and I, we can fit in here just fine, and we can also have our dog and some additional gear. I had one of my buddies come over, he's 6'5", he hopped in here, and he fit. He said he was comfortable, he wouldn't mind it, but no bigger than that. If you're taller than 6'5", you may want to try this out and see if it works for you. So as you can see here, I am sitting up fully, and that's nice because I can change clothes inside of this thing. I don't have to worry about that or do any weird angles. That's great. My buddy who is 6'5", he was able to, you know, essentially move his arms around. He could change clothes in this if he's closer to the door where the roof is higher. So with the Scorpion 3, this is my first look with this tent. Like I said, I've been doing some setting up with it about three or four times now. And guys, I am really, really impressed with what I see. Because of family issues that I have going on right now, I've been unable to get it out and actually test it out. But our next overnight adventure is coming up soon, and you may be able to vote on this tent being used for that trip. If not that one, definitely the next one. I kind of have something going on in my head here. I'm kind of tinkering with an idea. In the future, you will definitely have the option to vote to use this tent. I'm extremely impressed with this product. The price is really, really good too. This retails for $400, but, but on Amazon, the going rate is $269, something like that. For that price, you are getting a lot of tent. The materials, the construction quality is excellent. This tent really is just majorly waterproof. The quality, like I said, is fantastic. I really like the fact that this is a fly first design. So you can set this up in the rain and the inner is not going to get wet. The way that I showed you of setting this up is a first time approach. You do not have to disconnect the inner from the fly. So when you go to basically break this down, you can break it down all in one, fold it up, rock and roll, set it up with the fly inside. That's awesome. Of course, if you wanna use this shelter without the inner, say in a wintertime scenario where you don't care about the bug, bug mesh and so on, you can. With the inner itself, it is more of a double wall. So it's gonna keep you nice and warm. In the summertime, that could be an issue in direct sunlight, we will have to see. I can definitely see this being a warm tent. In the fall months and the winter months, that is a good thing. Keeping in some extra heat, great. Very, very sturdy. And also, this is a four season tent that you can pick up for $270. That is almost unheard of. A lot of people will comment sometimes about the cost of a four season tent because four season tents are really, really burly. 
They're typically better materials and they are costly. Four or five hundred dollars for a four season tent is inexpensive in many circles. So to be able to pick up a four season tent, a true four season tent for less than 300, wow, that is impressive. My friends, thank you very much for tuning in for this transmission. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the web zone. I will see you guys around. Strength and honor, get outside later. My friends, I am back for one more second just to point out that the the carry case, the compression sack for this tent really is too small for this tent in most situations. If you can spend a lot of time to fold up your tent to get it just right, super duper tight, you can get everything to fit inside of it. I pack this like I would on my average trip. I do it quickly, but I do a fairly good job. And as you can see here, I was unable to get my poles inside of the sack. So yeah, I, I really would like to see a bigger sack included with this tent.